Youth of Purpose. Hello viewers, welcome to Youth of Purpose show, a show that gives plat a platform to young people to contribute to this country's development. Today we are going to talk about International Day of Girl Child as it is observed by the whole world. This day is celebrated on 11th of October every year. Today with me in the show, I'm having Honorable Aul Betu Chan, the woman MP of Gulu City. She's going to tell us more about herself. Since we're celebrating the International Day of Girl Child, I decided to take the platform to be the host from Ivan. Thank you so much. Honorable, could you please introduce yourself to the viewers? Thank you very much, Sharon. I am Aul Betu Chan, a member of Parliament Gulu City. I'm a mother. I'm also a teacher by profession, now turn politician. I was one time the general secretary for Uganda Women Parliamentary Association for five years. And I have been also in the 10th parliament, a leader of opposition. I have taken responsibility of leading for long. I, I'm also proud to say that my father, well, he was a polygamous, but gave all of us equal opportunity. My father, my father's wish was that a girl should be able to read and write. So that time was still a, a little bit of difficult time, you know. You are young people, Sharon, you the young ones. You must call yourself lucky because your parents are already parents who are positive about giving equal opportunity to both boys and girls. But some of our parents didn't know the importance of girls. They thought girls were just meant to grow up, then they get married, they bring what cows. For us in actually sub-region, marrying it was about cows, bringing cows to home. But my father, who was also a man, said, no, uh, wait a bit. The girls should also be given equal opportunity to study. Their potential should be exploited. They should be able to stand on their two legs. They should be strong enough. They should be empowered. And that is why you see me as a leader now. If my father did not have that, uh, that what? That positive uh, uh, idea about both children, probably he would have given the opportunity to boys only. My mother's father was a policeman, but my mother never went to school because she was a girl. So yet the brothers went to school. So you oh. are luckier than us. And besides these days, you know, Uganda is considered to be a very young population. Young, why? Because the majority of the population are young people, the youth and the children. So if we don't put a lot more efforts in trying to, to empower them, and the empowerment should be now, then uh, we will be missing a lot. Yes, Honorable, thank you so much. Um, if I may ask this question, since you are an empowered woman, you're passionate about women's rights, you're passionate about girl child education. Why do you think it is important for Uganda as a country to observe International Day of Girl Child? Uh, up to now, we still have issues with the girl child. If you go, I have not done, I cannot bring now figures, but if you go on the ground, you will always find that the children who drop out of schools the most are girls. Still, in some remote areas, they still take girls for babysitting. They still take girls that, that girls are able to, to do a lot more work at home. And when there is conflict, domestic violence in a home, if a mother runs away, it is the girl, child, who now becomes the head of, of, the that of the family. Well, the father would be there, the head, but I must tell you, it's the girl who takes up all the responsibility of the mother. She becomes the mother of the siblings. 
So girls still have challenges. And we still have these challenges in the communities. So it is very important that this day is celebrated and uh, the message should reach out to all the leaders, especially leaders. I always take uh, especially local council one to be most important because that is where the problems are. If our local council ones are very passionate about uh, girls being in school and all the girls, the units are small. They should be able to, you know, uh, to, to see all, to view all, to put their what? Their lights to the whole area. And no girl should drop out of school. No marriage at that tender age, sometime at the age of 15, 16, a girl is married off to some uh, people who still do not know laws. But the LC ones should have their eyes strong on the ground and should not allow that. That is why it is very important to have this day celebrated. We want the rights of our girls. The girl child should be observed by all. And sometimes, you know, I want to give with an example. Because yeah. one time I stayed with a, a very uh, young girl who came to help me, very young. Then I took the girl to school. Yeah. When she was in P3, I gave her back to the mother. And uh, still I pay her in school, but was to live with the mother. The mother took this girl elsewhere now to go and work for money for her. Oh. Money for her. So then when I got to learn about it, I said, no, this is wrong. Mm -hmm. I invited the woman who employed the girl, was a, a nurse. She said, how do you employ, how do you employ uh, mm -hmm. uh, somebody who is not yet even 15? Not, you see, when we say 18, 18 is, eh, how? If you want to employ this girl, I gave her back to the mother. You employ her, but let her be in school. Mm -hmm. The mother came to me, you know, ignorance. Sometimes ignorance is, hey, who are you? Are you responsible for this girl? This is my child. The only person can, who can speak about this girl is my, is my, my, my brother, not you. Then I just only look at her and said, my dear, this is for the future of this girl. It's for her future. You didn't study, she should study, finish hers, and also have yours completed by her. So you should wish her to be more in school than any other person. So please. And she abused me, and so she left. But that lady also decided to to leave the girl, the, the nurse decided mm. to leave the girl. So that girl never studied. It hurt me so much. She's now a woman with maybe about four or five kids, mm. eh, but never got the opportunity. So such, such girls are very many in the communities. True. And you know, biologically, I'm a teacher of biology. Biologically, it's a girl who after making one, two, three mistakes, then she gets pregnant. Uh, when a girl is about 13, 14 years there, she's able to menstruate, menstruation. And that is already an indication that someone can, pregnant. Some, someone can get pregnant. pregnant yes. But the bones are not yet good enough to let her be able to push, to hold, and to push. That's why we emphasize 18 years old. So, if a girl gets pregnant at maybe 14, 15, I have ever seen very many girls getting pregnant at that tender age. There in Gulu, even in Gulu City, there are just too many. Sure. So it's really the girl who gets pregnant. For the boys right now, if we, if we have to address, we can address Oh, probably drinking, running away from home. But for the girls, 
if she gets pregnant, then uh, originally that is the end of her uh, roadmap to school. Now we say no. If it was an accident, let this girl deliver and goes back to school because we need their potential to be exploited to the fullest, not halfway. So parents have to take charge. Parents are, some parents are very difficult. If a girl gets pregnant, that is the end. But if we give examples of some girls who after that kind of accident then is taken back to school, you find that the girls are able to perform like you. You are now going to graduate next week. Congratulations. Thank you. you we, are, we, are, we are very proud of you. So we need to be a little patient with our daughters. Uh, yes, Honorable. Um, what are some of the challenges being faced by the young girls in Uganda, beginning with your own constituency, Gulu City? Going to school, playing with the her age mates, uh, and you know, is eh, is very important. While if you go to other areas, for example, if you go to Kapchorwa, we came out with a, a law in the eighth parliament about female genital mutilation. And this female genital mutilation is done when the girl is around P5, P6. And when it's done on you, then you drop out of school because later you have to test yourself. So in the testing, then you get married. Eh? You are, a man has to, to test you. This is the biggest human rights on our young girls. Because then you are first done away with what God has put there in order for the person to be a girl. You do away with it. So that she becomes almost like a log, not, not a, a living thing when you are in for your sexual rights. So it has many, many, many negative aspects. The other aspect is the girl now falling out of school. Then you miss out in uh, probably going a little further with your education. We put it as a law, but I'm sure the practices may, may still be there. Sure. Although the law is there. The uh, they, they, in, at the grassroots, there are people who just steal themselves to do it uh, uh, in the name of our, our, this is our culture. Yes, there are good aspects of cultures, but there are those bad ones. Those bad ones, we need to discard them which will not allow our girl to be empowered. Our girl, our child must be empowered. Give, be given equal opportunity uh, with the rest. You go to other regions, they look at uh, girls as um, just, you know, somebody who has to bring in um, wealth. Wealth. Bride price. Bring the, that is with the bride price. And um, they see you grow, grow. They want to even um, entice you to go very quickly to a, a man. And uh, I talked also about motherless girl. A motherless girl, sometimes you get a stepmother who is so difficult. And every time encourages you, hey, what are you still waiting here? Get, your, get to your home. That's why this theme is so important, to open up the eyes of everybody. Sometimes if I am living without my mother, it's not by choice. Sometimes it is because of calamities, because of what has happened. So take me as your daughter and encourage me, be near me and let me go to school. Let my potential be exploited too. The, the fullest, really. Eh? I, I, do, I don't want to say that training at home does not contribute to the empowerment of a girl. Yes, 
but you need all this mix, the training at home as well as training in schools. And we know in schools, these days we say it, there is a tendency of saying uh, a person who has not gone to school is can be equated, can be compared with a blind person because you are not able to see everything very clearly. So we should all, all, every part of Uganda should try to pay attention to girl child education, girl child rights. Eh? Education is a right. So since it is a right, it has to be applied to all. Uh, we also don't want to, to make the boy child become vulnerable. There are people who think, ah, ah, this one will compete with me. So you don't give attention. Let us give attention to all that God has given us. I always tell my people in the constituencies, in my Guru city there, I tell them, you know, a child is God's given. And since it's God's given, you cannot buy it in any shop or any market or anywhere. Since it is God's given, it is the best gift. So let us receive these gifts with real heart, good heart, to nurture them to be better than us. That's why I say Sharon is a lot better than me and her what? Her generation. They are going to be a lot better than us, our generation, because they are brought up by people who are, who are already gender sensitive, people with the gender glasses. But the problem is still there. How can we completely eradicate the problem? Okay. Eh? That is why so, we uh, say terrible. it is now. Maybe to chip in there, uh, thank you for that insightful message. Uh, this year's theme says, how our time is now, our rights, our future. So how can we empower a young girl back there in Gulu City, in Busia, in Karamoja, to claim the now that we are talking about in this year's theme? First of all, the celebration, which is on the 11th, 11th uh, October, is already also an eye-opener. Although that girl there, down there at the grassroots, does not have TV, and sometimes she doesn't also listen to radio, but uh, we expect also a girl at the age of 9, 10 there to be able to open up the eyes of their parents. I want to tell you sincerely, the best place of disseminating information is schools. When we target schools, then we find that at least information can reach out to every part of Uganda. So uh, I do not know how school will, uh, will grab this. I wish all the schools in Uganda get to know about this uh, girl child day, the day we advocate for the girl child. Then they would also uh, talk about it in schools and the children will go and talk about this to their parents, to the communities back home. Talking is advocating. We need to advocate for the girl child a lot. Eh? That will help to open up the eyes of everybody. Leaders, some of us leaders, also our eyes are not fully open. Eh? We do not put on the gender glasses. We need gender glasses everywhere. Some of us leaders still would say, mm -hmm, if it has happened like that, then what? Mm -hmm. So let it be. If you go to police, we have this family, family what? Unit. Family unit in the police station. Sometimes you see that the treatment also given there uh, is not the best because some of these police policemen, now let me say policemen, are violators of this right. You know, if a policeman is able to get 
a child who is not yet 18 for a wife, then we not see the importance of enforcing or pushing in for that law. So enforcement, law enforcement should be very strong to allow our girls to claim their rights. Oh. Their rights should be now, eh? not tomorrow. And to claim this, it should be not only from the parents, but starting from the parents, the relatives around. Then even with the police, even with the leaders, that this is our right. Oh, okay. This is our right. Let thank them you. know their right. Uh, thank you so much, Honorable. Um, we are going for a short break. We shall be right back. Welcome from the break. You're still watching Youth of Papa's show. I'm still with Honorable uh, Old Betu Chan, the woman MP of Gulu City. We are still talking about International Day of Girl Child that is celebrated every year, 11th of October. So, Honorable, what is your message to the young girls out there? Thank you very much, Sharon. My message is not only to the young girls, but since this affects the young girls, so let them be number one. To you, the young girls, sometimes when something affects you, you should be in the forefront. Be in the forefront to, kill, to claim or reclaim. If you are already disadvantaged, then reclaim your right now. That you should be empowered that you should focus on your uh, vision. You know, sometimes you have a dream. What is your dream? Is your dream to produce when you are, when you are not yet even enough, uh, to, you have not yet reached that age? So claim it, whether from your parents, from the community, from um, school. So study, be empowered. And also share it with your friends, the young girls. To the parents, let us give opportunity to all. Let us put on gender glasses and see our children as our children given by God. You know, it is only God who has given us these children. So let us uh, give them equal opportunity to empower them equitably. And uh, to us leaders, leaders, leaders must always be equipped with knowledge, information, and wisdom. So let us also have a lot of wisdom in handling our young people in this young Uganda. Yeah, so I wish, especially the young people, the young girls, a very happy celebration and to all Ugandans, happy celebration of the Girl Child Day. Thank you. Welcome back to the show. You're still watching Youth of Papas that comes to you every Saturday at 2.30 to 3 p.m. I'm here with my ladies. How are you, ladies? Fine. Uh, why do you think it is important to, to celebrate International Day of Girl Child to you, beginning with your names? Thank you so much, Sharon. My name is Catherine Edith Chisache, and I'm currently a student at Uganda Christian University in my third year. So I would first thank, I would first take this privilege to thank God for the fact that I'm a girl child. I want us to all believe that the reason why we are girls, the, the reason why we were created this way, God had a purpose for our lives. Because he had a plan for us to, you know, to impact into this world. So as girls, we are not going to be put down because uh, a certain gender feels that we cannot do certain things. But rather, we have to stand up and, you know, make a change in our society. We can actually be leaders. We can lead. We can lead society. We can make the changes. We can, we can speak, nurture, and, you know, all that that is not expected of us. I'm happy to be here. My name is Nachiranda Ruth Martha, a fourth year law student at Uganda Christian University. Why? This day is very important to us. As a girl, it reminds me of who I am. What are we? Celebrating you out there, it's such an honor. It's a privilege being celebrated as in the International uh, Girls Day. It reminds us our capability, what we, are, what we, are, we, are, what we can do. Uh, personally, I've been uh, participating in politics. So as a girl, this reminds me that 
this oh, not only is going to stop at a uh, university level, but it's going to it's going to push me hard to be an MP in future, actually even wow. a president. Mm -hmm. So being a girl child, being a girl, it's like being a flower. A girl is like a flower. They're supposed to be cared of. A flower like, has good scent. So that's we. We are girls. What is your message to the young girls out there? Maybe um, your district uh, and the whole Uganda at large. What is your message in regard to International Day of Girl Child? First and foremost, I would, take, I would like to take this opportunity to be thankful for the fact that this day has been put in consideration to be celebrated. Now, the message I have for the girls out there is that this is the time to actually stand up and own it, own it as girls. Um, take on whatever opportunity that you feel is at heart. Let it be something that seems to only be masculine. You can actually stand up and do it. You can actually stand up for that position that you think you cannot. You can actually take on that combination that people think is only for boys. You can actually take on that course that is only known to be masculine. We can actually change this world and it is our time to actually embrace, to actually stand up, to empower even as girls. We are going to be mothers at a point. This, that we also need to take that opportunity to nurture our children, to remind them so that, so that this continues to the next generations also. Thank you. Uh, coming to you, Martha, do you think uh, young girls are aware of their rights and what can we do or what can you do as you, Martha, to make the young girls around you realize their rights? Apparently, yes. A section of girls or a few of the girls know about their rights and they get to know about these rights because some are out there in schools. I come from Busia, a border district, whereby we have seen a lot of violence on girls, uh, rape, defilement, early marriages. But as a society and the help of the police, they have come out together to curb all this, whereby we see uh, we have UP, UPE schools in Busia, that is Madividia and Border. In the schools, girls are given an opportunity to know about their rights. Putting that aside, in the school compound, there are always uh, these posters. Talking compounds. Yeah, those talking compounds, whereby there, in there, students are knowing about their rights. So me as me, as Martha, uh, every time I get an opportunity to speak to a crowd of girls, I remind them, like, we are powerful. What a man can do, a woman can always do it better. So my message out to all the girls out there, it's our time to shine as I said it earlier. Please, let's stand out together as one, strong, because we are the mothers of this nation. That's why Uganda is called Ha, not him. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I feel so happy hearing that from you. I've never heard it from anyone. So thank you so much for that powerful message. As I conclude, According to the laws of Uganda, we all know children are, are those below the age of 18. And this way, that's when the adolescent st stage starts from the age of 10 to 19. When these girls are into in, the, in the adolescent stage, they are most likely to fall into temptations, uh, having sex, and so on. But they're going to get pregnant. In being pregnant, they're going to drop out of school. So please, our mothers, our fathers, our teachers, our elders, out there in your community and society, if you would predict or you see a child in the adolescent stage kindly bring them closer talk to them guide them walk, walk, walk with them throughout this journey because they need you they need your guidance thank you thank you so much for that powerful message Martha I feel so so impressed and to you the listeners thank you so much for watching I remain Lamuno Sharon Brenda a proud alumina of Uganda Christian University Kampala campus and the founder of Konyako Foundation, a community-based organization that focuses on girl-child education in Gulu. And I'm very passionate about girl-child education, women's rights, social justice, and public litigation. Thank you, Ivan, for making me the host. See you again next time. Youth of Purpose.